Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of You Fluent. I'm your host Anisha Rahman and in today's episode we'll be looking at education in lockdown. Now as you all know we are unfortunately back into again another lockdown. However this lockdown is distinctively and significantly more different to the first one. Why? Well because this time schools have remained open meaning children are still being expected to attend school physically full time. So they shouldn't be missing out on any learning at all and they should still be able to attend classes as normal and see their friends. But that doesn't take away the fact that obviously that experience will be much more different now with all the new COVID-19 measures in place at school. So we'll be looking at the impact of children now attending school in the midst of a pandemic. But we will also be looking at the impact of virtual online lessons, something very new because we've never really experienced this before. But those with children and self-isolating have actually been receiving remote learning from their home. So how does that compare with attending school physically full time? Today I've been joined by two incredible guests. GCSE student Farhim Rahman and A-level student Oketa um, Zogi Sharlow, who today will be both telling me about their experiences of education in lockdown. Now, I know Farhim has been receiving virtual lessons and Oketa is still attending school physically. So this will be a very interesting episode today. So how are we both today? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Good, thank you. Yep, really good. Um, I guess the first things first I really want to talk about is the actual environment now with school. So. I actually want to gain a much more deeper insight into what attending school looks like now as, um, I guess, as a full time student physically. So I guess the first question I want to ask you guys is how have these precautionary measures actually impacted your school life? Okay, I think back. it's been quite strange, you know, we go into school and the first thing we have to do is wash our hands before we go into a lesson. And then after that, when we go, we're, comp- we're always told, you know, social distancing, don't touch each other, like there are all these precautions and yeah. it's been quite like a big change in our lives because you know we usually go into school every day like I would hope. And what about you Fahim? Uh, well before I like had to self-isolate and I was actually going inside school, uh, yeah as Okara said we had to wash our hands, they completely took out the water fountains uh, and what's fountain since it's like shared by everyone back then, yeah, it just got taken out completely. And then um, uh, they took out the water fountains completely, and uh, they just replaced it with hand washing stations. And we all line up and like do it. So we like wash our hands for twenty seconds. Then um, like the next people go after twenty seconds, and then um. They also put like water bottle um, uh, fountains instead. Well, it's not a fountain, it's just, it hangs on the wall, but it's kind of nice, like the water thing. And um, also uh, for PE, we literally come in with our PE kit and we don't wear our school clothes. We just wear our PE kit, but for catches, we wear these colored t-shirts. So like each year we have ties, and uh, they all have a colour. So, for example, green is year 10 and red is year 11 and etc. And yeah. what we do is we wear like green, a green T-shirt on top of that. We can't wear it underneath. So that's the only annoying catch. But I kind of like it because apart from the T-shirts, it's comfortable wearing a PE kit all day. Like yeah. I get to wear trainers and I don't feel tired. I can move more freely, so yeah. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I think with all these measures, now there's such a huge emphasis on hygiene. Like you, as you were saying, okay, you had to line up, but now to even wash your hands, and there are even times that you have to wash your hands more frequently. I think it's that yeah, there's even zones. emphasis. Yeah. yeah, exactly, and it makes it much more different. But then, as well, I guess as you were pointing out, Farm, I guess it has also drive some new improvements, like you were saying with. Now you are able to access water much more nicer, safer, cleaner way, really. So it's really interesting, actually, how yeah. in some ways those measures have been, I don't know, somewhat really plunging you into this whole sort of clinical environment as if you're in a medical environment. But then at the same time, it's really, so I guess, create some in- um, improvement, really. But have your school expected you to follow any rules of any kind really, in order to reduce the spread of COVID-19, apart from maybe washing your hands? Okay, to you first. Well, yeah. Uh, well, obviously, we're not allowed to touch other people and we're meant to, we have like bubbles, so we're not allowed to interact with other year groups. Um, so we have different lunch times, we have different areas that are specified to our own year group. 
I mean, that bit is too difficult because, you know, we socialise this way not me usually. Um, but the social distancing has been a bit strange because we're expected to follow it outside. But then when we're in some classes, sometimes we have more students in the class, so we have to sit next to other people. So then we don't really adhere to it within classrooms. So I guess it can be quite confusing and it's sort of like a double standard. Mm, exactly. And I think as well, staying away from your friends, I guess, outside, which is really the time where we're completely interacting with our friends. Yeah. It's kind of like, well, are we even interacting at all then? <laughs> if we're really, you know, sort of the mm. two metre apart, like, even with those bubbles, even though we are with our own year, then having social distance within that year is quite, I guess, a difficult thing. And then at the same time, you are yeah. sitting with them in lessons. It is a bit, what? What is going on here? I think that is always mm. kind of baffles me as well. I think especially because in classes, it's really not really much social distancing. Maybe certain classes, I think it really depends and varies from teacher to teacher. There's not really one clear way on how you enforce social distancing, which is a bit confusing, I guess. What about you, Fahim? Um, yeah, it's similar to that. We also have to wear masks in corridors now Ooh. and like between lessons. Uh, outside, I think it's optional because we're just with like year. But they do recommend we social distance and also like they changed, you know how OKS has said they changed our um like I guess zones and stuff like that. Yeah, that is yeah, that's the same thing. They also changed up our timetables, like not the lessons, but the order. So we have two lessons, then we have break, which is normal, but then after break we go to tutor time, which is kind of like a Let's be honest, oh. it's a mini break. No one does anything yeah. in tutor time. We just talk. And then we go to our third lesson. Then we have lunch. Then we have our fourth lesson and our fifth lesson. So I don't really mind this. It took some getting used to, but the only problem is that on Mondays, I have six periods, not five, uh, like everyone else, because I'm in top set. And what is like what kills me is that it's three hours after we've had lunch in the sixth lesson and I have oh. so many bad stomach aches like you have no idea <laughs> like my stomach kills me because I have IBS and <laughs> yeah it's really awkward but luckily now the teachers uh they've given us yellow cards so we can basically just leave just to go to the toilet whenever we want it, like if we have a medical condition and it's kind of better to be honest, like, I like it a lot. I can just pull out a yellow card and be like, Miss, I have a stomach ache, and they just let me. And it's much better. And I feel like they fought to implement this after the COVID-19. Was because, like, it wasn't easy to show a teacher you had a medical, like, reason to go. You had to bring, like, some stupid letter, or, you know, like, you know, you had to tell them or, like, give them proof. Now you just have a yellow card, so it's much more simple. Mm. I guess with the staggered timing, just, I guess to avoid mixing with other year groups. But yeah, completely. I think that timetable rearrangement, when you're thrust into that sort of new change, it does feel weird to getting used to because I think, I think you know, when you've been, I guess, in school for so long with one sort of type, type of timetable, how you would say, ah, now you're not in that. So, you know, it does feel really weird. Even I felt the same thing. I'm sure Aketa did as well because, you know, I think now we see that everyone else has a sort of different timetable. We don't even really see any other year group virtually at all. It's quite quite strange actually it kind of sometimes makes you feel like you're the only year group in that school um, I mean I used to have like some sort of older friends as well so I wouldn't really ever see them anymore but it's quite you know it's very strange actually even my own younger siblings I don't get to see them so I mean it does make sense though because I think I guess it does reduce the spread but yeah it is definitely really different and I guess what's really interesting is do you actually both find going to school and attending school physically then is more beneficial to you both because you both are at very critical points in your studies Okay, to you first. I think definitely. I know that when we were in the lockdown, the first one, I feel like I wasn't as productive, which was sort of okay because, you know, we didn't have to go back to school. We finished our GCSEs and we didn't have anything to learn for. But I think if we were currently doing it virtually, it's much more difficult for me personally mm -hmm. to be productive just because I, I thrive off of, like, social interaction and, you know, being in a classroom, it just feels so much more different when you're there physically rather than being at home. I don't know, that's just me personally. Completely, I feel the same. Um, honestly, I think now that I've had a taste of both, 
I really do prefer to go to school physically, especially as now I'm pretty sure I communicate with people on FaceTime about later on. But it's very difficult to sort of maintain those social relationships, actually, when you're in lockdown, especially as everyone else is there with the school bus and you're not there, actually, with the school bus, especially with studies. Honestly, I sometimes feel like I'm not completely tracking it and I'm usually in a dressing gown in those lessons. It's like, it's really different, actually. um, You know, I guess going to school physically and doing that feels really strange. What about you, Fahim? Would you prefer going to school physically or virtual lessons now? Oh, uh, during the first lockdown, uh, that that was actually the best. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, going to school physically, it was just, it's just you know, like I had to like walking, doing all of that. It's just more flexible, and <laughs> it's not like we had Zoom meetings for every lesson. Like they, we had this uh, website called Show My Homework, and um, Mm. Yeah, we just log in and they give us all our homework usually. But when lockdown started, they just gave all our classwork. So a whole week's worth of classwork, they just give it to you on Monday. Like, and then you have to finish it over time. And uh, I developed this habit of waking up at 6 a.m. So I I woke up at 6 a.m. Yeah. And then, um, like, I did this from Monday to Thursday. And then I basically go down to the computer. And I do homework, well, classwork technically, for like eight hours straight, like a normal school day. Sometimes it even extended longer, but like I literally just sat down and I just did as much work as I can. And uh, I got like 96% of my homework done uh, the whole year. I think the other 4% was pre before lockdown, like way Mm -hmm. before. But yeah, I did that. And it, it actually was good because it was so flexible. Like, you can do, really just do it at any time. I just did it at 6 a.m. because, like, then I had time to, like, play after. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I did it from Monday to Thursday. And then, like, I, this whole schedule was so good because then later, because I did most of my work those four days, yeah, like, people would think, oh, you'd get tired because the thing is I sleep at midnight. It's not really easy to sleep early as a teenager especially during GCSEs yeah so I did that I literally basically slept six hours like a day um uh, and then like on Friday because there's less work I literally just got to sleep in so I did that I slept like 13 hours because I wake up at 1 p.m and Mm. it, it might sound really weird but it works perfectly so I did that for three other days so like 13 times 3, that's 39 hours. Most um, teenagers, they sleep like 7 hours a day. So I basically got like 5 days of sleep back plus 4 hours. And like, when you like think of it so much here, yeah, it, it just makes you less tired. You feel like, I guess, you know, you just feel like you can just wake up early again. And I just, that is, I yeah. use that mentality to my advantage. And I just woke up at 6 a.m. After that week, I, I got so used to waking up at 6 a.m. I didn't even need a alarm. I just woke up at 6 a.m. naturally. Mm. Would you say with that. the second lockdown, it's been a bit more difficult with this lockdown now? Oh, yes. Yeah. Second online lockdown learning. is the worst. Because first lockdown was so easy. Like, I just deactivated Instagram. I, I just focused on work all the time. And I just had fun with um playing after. But then second lockdown, like, we had some online lessons, like, I guess, like, Zoom, Google Meet type lessons um, in like, the first one. That was just with my computing. Uh, mm. I didn't mind it. I was good with it. The problem I have is they cut my access off to have Google Meet because only people who are self-isolating can have online lessons. Oh, yeah, which only is... the shielding. Yeah, yeah exactly, and... Yeah. Uh, like technically I am shielding but they won't let me the head teacher's really weird but I don't understand what that's about and you just cut off my access and I can't do anything and they don't even post like the classwork really on show my own work I I just have to ask my teachers now oh yeah can I have the lesson slide please miss please like that's literally what happens and then they reply like two hours later and they're like, oh, sorry, I didn't see your message. Some of my teachers just completely ignored me, which is just, you know, it's kind yeah. of awkward. It's, it's strange yeah. because actually 
I receive for example like I get to do all of my Google G meet lessons I get to join in every time I still get to sort of engage yeah Anisha's a, yeah you're allowed I'm not yeah I'm just, and I don't get me to off. yeah and it's, it's funny because when I um, go into the lessons it kind of feels like I'm part of it but at the same time it depends in various lessons so usually I'm just the sort of ghost that never says anything I just sort of stay still sort of stands by but then sometimes, you know, the teachers will involve me in. So it really definitely sort of varies. But at the same time, they haven't been able to collect my data or really track my progress, I guess, unless with, you know, some teachers are more proactive, you know, can figure out how to make, I don't know, maybe assessments or something in a control manner, whereas others can't. And then instead they'll have to take all of those big pile of assessments, for example, I, out, I think I missed out like six so far. And I will have to somehow take it, you know, after this. And I guess after this lockdown's over. So it really varies, I think, with remote learning. I think that's kind of the issue here. I mean, I don't know about you, okay. Do you sort of see any issues, I guess, from hearing this, how remote learning varies? I think definitely, you know, the point that Ryan brought up, I didn't actually know that was the case. I thought that, you know, if you're if you're not in school, you still get to attend the Google Meets. But yeah, that is definitely concerning, the fact that you don't actually get to do that, especially this is such a critical time in your education and yeah I think that's definitely a strange aspect of it I think also you know Anisha like you said of course you're attending the uh, Google Meets in our class you know it's great Mr Reed our English teacher who, who you know wants to make you the ghost in Hamlet so you're engaged in that lesson but <laughs> exactly. um, I think also it is like you said it's difficult to assess where you are um, especially if some teachers aren't as engaging or if they don't do as many assessments and that's sort of to you that's sort of hindering your learning just because I know obviously exactly. you're a fantastic student but it's like you want to show that to your teachers as well that you're progressing and I feel like you don't get an opportunity to do that so much yeah and yeah. I think it's really difficult course. as well just hearing that yeah. variation even you were mentioning five you're always more uploading homework not really yeah. lessons and I guess yeah, you are may I out bring up something also yeah, really quickly yeah ahead, also yeah. I show my homework they've gone lazy some of the teachers I've noticed <laughs> the ones who didn't respond to me yeah I've noticed as soon as you just submit a file it, like, it could be literally any file yeah they don't even check it it automatically oh, then yeah. submits it Usually I would take this as a good thing, but in this case, they're ignoring me and they're not even going to look at my work. Mm -hmm. I could literally submit anything. I could submit a picture of like, I don't know, the floor. I can just then submit it and it would work. Like, they wouldn't even check it. It would just sub automatically mm -hmm. submit, which is just unfair. Because usually before, it, like, you could just submit your work, they look at it, and then they like, I guess pass it through as submitted yeah uh, like, it's interesting how much variation is in remote learning really I think that's what it is we still yeah. need to figure out how to I, make I it I would have been fine I actually would have been fine genuinely but the thing is I don't have any access I can only do homework which is not very helpful I, I've literally been I like my main lessons I literally have a stack of revision books like right there on that dresser mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, like it's like what, what it's like seven books. Yeah, I'm just looking like at all the material and like the revision material. I'm trying to see well, what lesson did I do last. I think we're doing this next. I have to just think. Yeah, exactly. And it is quite hard. It's like placing a bit of a responsibility on you. I guess to figure out how to keep yeah. track with your own learning. But Which... it's very difficult to do independent learning. Even I find it very difficult to sort of be there without a teacher. I think that guidance is really needed. And that's 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 something you can gain, I guess, from going to school physically. Yeah, only well, actually two having teachers. having those virtual lessons. Yeah. yeah. Only two exactly. teachers gave me secret G-Meet lessons because they know that <laughs> teacher won't allow me. They're only doing they just give me the code. And then we just uh, turn off recording. They, they just make sure to, like, not record the chat so they don't see me. Like, that's the thing. I don't want, like, I... Obviously, I want to have lessons, but I'm concerned for some of these actually good teachers. I don't want them to lose their job <laughs> or get in trouble. No, yeah, like, completely. That's the thing. I just, I just want to be able to like have a legit like lesson. Just you know, go <laughs> normally. Yeah. I don't want it exactly. to be like all sneaky because I'm, mm. I'm just trying to learn. And I'm, I am a top student. I, I had grade nines, eights, like sevens, and they don't let me. So. 
if I fail my GCSEs, oh, I don't say that, but I'm know, sure you. Well, hopefully... I don't want to jinx it, but like still. <laughs> No, but you are definitely losing out on a huge piece of your education. I remember back in GCSEs, like you could you could do a lot in a day, so you miss out a lot of things. And I, I guess now as well with a lot of not missing out, definitely in lots of days. So yeah, it's really like, unfortunate I think to I've hear that. Now really missed, sorry. I think I've missed like three weeks now, and I have one more week because tomorrow is my birthday, and a week from that I return to school. So I'm going to miss like four weeks, which is oh god, yeah, yeah really, that's really bad. That's yeah. so helpful. Yeah. It must, yeah, it's not even Do good. you both have you both also seen an impact? And I guess this is more outside of lesson time, but it still counts because you know schools do, do have responsibility to I guess to prepare you for that world of work. Have you guys by any chance seen any impact, I guess, of the pandemic on those sort of extracurricular activities? So after school clubs or those sort of enrichment opportunities that help you to explore the world of work that work that the school sort of signpost you to. Have you seen any impact with that perhaps now with the pandemic? You first, okay. I'll uh, well, I think there's definitely been a detrimental impact on extracurricular activities, especially like sports after school. And I remember we used to have debating after school, and that's just not happening anymore. And I think it can be quite difficult just because a lot of people use those clubs as their escape, and it's something that they enjoy. And you don't really get those opportunities anymore. And I think they're trying to include them now, but it is definitely there's definitely been a decline in extracurriculars. Uh, we have, like, of course, opportunities in terms of our A-levels, so we're starting to use the Q soon, and, you know, a careers network, but that's not extracurricular. That's sort of still to do with education, and I think exactly, some yeah. clubs, yeah, mm. some clubs that people actually, like, enjoy, and that's the reason why they're excited to come into school has been removed. And I think it's had quite a mm. quite a big impact. Yeah, I yeah. always feel sorry for the new year sevens. They're not going to completely experience what <laughs> that was. But I also think as well, like you were mentioning as well, I'm wondering those sort of opportunities that I guess help you sort of explore your career aspirations more that perhaps the school helped you with and signpost you to. Had they sort of been virtual? Do they feel weird or a bit different perhaps by any chance? Because you're at the sort of critical point, I guess, where you're trying to accumulate all these experiences and write about something, I guess your personal statement for later on or just trying to gain I guess a much more deeper insight really into what you want to do does that sort of do you sort of struggle to do that now perhaps I think definitely I think like you said a lot of the things that we do are virtually and as much as it's still great I still can write it in our personal statement and everything it is much more different to actually going into the place or you know having an interview in person because it's just not the same like for example, I know one of my friends, they were having an interview and then their battery ran out or their phone isn't working or like mm. a microphone or something and it's just not the same because then that sort of puts you in a bad light when you're not sort of yeah. that sort of person. And I think also, you know, with um, our careers networks, we've been promised an internship over the summer. That's why many people are doing it. Exactly. But we still are uncertain as to whether that is actually going to continue or if it's going to be virtually and I think it'll be very difficult to experience it in its fullest form virtually completely yeah, I don't see it at all very I don't strange. yeah I don't think an internship or a work experience makes it, it feels weird to do it virtually I mean yeah. it's like would they mm. just show you the place I mean how would you really sort of take that active role oh, cool. I mean, it's just, exactly just sort of go ahead, yeah. come over here like, it's like with my yeah. hospital placement I felt the same I mean uh, I know that there is, for example, NHS workers and placements that are virtual, and I have no idea how they work, but apparently the way they showed is they had virtual talks. But, um, you know, and well, I know that, for example, because I'm now doing a physical work experience placement at the hospital, I can definitely feel it a lot more, much more like I'm there. I can see how COVID 19 has really changed it. It's really important, I think, just to still be able yeah. to physically experience those work experience placements, and you don't get to. And I know, Farm, you're also doing your work. It's, you know, you're, you're in year 10, you're supposed to do your work experience. How yeah, I was actually going to. But if you think about it, like extracurricular activities, as Oket said, there is a decline, there was a detrimental impact. And in my opinion, it's basically dead. There's actually nothing to do. Like, yeah, completely. Quarantine, coronavirus just killed it off completely. I can't do anything uh, extracurricular, extracurricular. But like, I know that like there are some like sport ones where I think some people do it, but 
think uh, for now school aren't doing it this term, which, you know, like, I'm not surprised by, like, like it was inevitable, but yeah. work experience, that's what really mattered to me. And the problem is that, one, like, not only did quarantine basically make it harder, yeah, uh, the year above, the, like, I think the year, not the year 12, the year 13, they ruined um, the work experience. The one, the ones from our school, they basically ruined it so bad. They, they did it. They, oh my god, I, I don't even know how to explain it. They, they, they were so bad at the work experience that we got cut off. Like our whole school got cut off from the program. So they ruined, they ruined the year twelve and the year eleven. Like year nine, they ruined everything. Would so, you say COVID nineteen's yeah. also really significantly impacted those work experience placements as well? Yeah, yeah. I don't COVID-19, know if you got to find any. Yeah, they. Yeah, not only. Yeah, that definitely was a factor, but also like the year thirteen's, like also ruined it. I won't lie, but it's just the thing is now you have to search up work experience yourself, and it's not easy. It really isn't. You have to find no, the perfect not, one. Yeah. yeah, Anisha was lucky enough to get NHS because you know. So that that's literally what you've been working for, like your whole life, and you know you eventually found it. They've reached out to you. And you it's really hard them. to find, yeah, definitely. It's really yeah, hard it's to find not easy, and that's the thing. Like, it's not, it's not like you don't get a job just by having like good school grades. No, people are interested in your personality too. They're interested yeah. in like your work experience. You know the extracurricular activities. They actually see that you give. Like you actually care, you know, about your job. Like, if you just uh, do your school stuff and like that's really it, you're like, yeah, I'm going to get the job. They're not really going to care. Yeah, <laughs> you have to get yeah. work experience. Like, they can see that you're committed to, yeah. you know, your yeah. actual like job. And it's a bit unfortunate and, that COVID nineteen sort of impacted that, you know, the extracurricular yeah, activities, and, you know. Decrease it. And I was no work experience basis, actually. And I was going to make a CV soon, but probably going to I'm probably oh. going to procrastinate again with the CV. No, and I think I think definitely it has left lots of kids of procrastinating and I don't really blame them. It, it, there is that sort of loss of what to do and I think that's really yeah. important having that social interaction and now we don't really get that. Another issue I I've seen with remote learning as well is perhaps a digital divide and it's something that we don't always get to talk about we are starting to hear it more now I know okay you were already talking about how one of your friends the battery went off and the battery going off means you can't really access that opportunity really it kind of it really limited her in that case you know constrained really what she wanted to do I guess with the digital divide not everyone has the devices really not everyone maybe has you know maybe some people are sharing one device in their home or maybe they're just not enough devices maybe they don't have a working one or a really old one all of these things can really play a significant impact in that. And I'm just wondering, do you think perhaps schools need to think, uh, find ways to address that really more? Because do you think it's a relevant problem? Like, do you think it makes sense that it's a problem? And do you really think, what can we do to sort of address that problem, I guess, to curb that? Okay, to you first. Uh, I think it's definitely a big issue. I think, you know, that's the problem with remote learning. It doesn't take into consideration the fact that not everyone else not everyone has access to devices. Some people may just not have access to the internet even. And mm. I think that's the problem with it. And in order to address it, I think we need to be speaking more about it and to sort of get schools more actively involved. So if someone is learning remotely, then, and they don't have access to the technology that they need, you know, to give a laptop to them temporarily or to, you know, allow them access to internet or whatever they need because it's not going to be permanent they're not going to need it forever so i don't think it will be much of an issue to give them the access that they need so i think it's definitely a resolvable issue but i think people need to actually start doing something about it rather than just saying that they're going to do something about it exactly definitely i think i've even heard as well the government said that they were going to give laptops, I think, in the first lockdown, mm-hmm. they said they were going to give laptops to those who were disadvantaged in free school meals or something like that. Um, but, you know, 
it didn't happen <laughs> really in reality it took a long time or there was issues over what students and was it only a certain year i think it was only, i can um i can speak on behalf of one yeah. of my friends yeah one of my friends yeah. uh i felt bad for him he's one of the he's like one of the smart kids in my year if you think about it, like he's like one of the top five smartest i'd say um yeah the thing is he's intelligent it's just like he couldn't do any of his work his phone there he was limited to his phone and he was supposed to get a laptop from the government but they didn't even send exactly. it to him they said they will but they never did and it is a resolvable issue as okay said yeah. the thing is i mean maybe people might say i'm being too harsh from the government um like you should see it from their point of view i'd say probably from their point of view it is expensive getting laptops so like a million people but i'd say like they can do it though they do have the money but it's just like maybe it's because they've mm -hmm. been running out of money like a lot lately and that also like almost mm -hmm. you know made the decision to like get rid of school free school meals and like that did like factor in so it's just mm, i think like mm -hmm. the government have the money it's just like maybe they're also yeah. like, spending there might be other stuff they're just spending money on like the government have a history of spending money on pretty like useless things like have you heard like the yeah, government definitely. spent like they spent like millions and i mean like so much money on like 140 paintings yes. and like oh, 137 of them yeah. you can't even see there's only like three of them you can see yeah like the public can see but the others what's the point <laughs> No, I mean, yeah, like, completely. It's useless waste and money. Yeah, I guess it'd like, be much more better spent, like into. I guess I'm helping children like, thrive. If the government are listening to this, I am begging you, please invest in something useful. Invest in laptops. Invest in better internet, and invest in schools. But that's literally like, honestly. Never wanted one of the schools open, you know, and now they're not even providing access to people who need exactly. it. I remember I had like, Exactly, we could be a smarter off. nation. We're, we're just yeah. limiting our opportunities. We could be a smarter nation if they just invest more smartly. So, you know. Honestly, yeah. Just, and I guess as you were saying as well, like you've there's no talk, benefit. Like, it, it, like there's no how benefit. How do you keep getting, schools open? Yeah, yeah like it's kind buying kind of funny art, to keep there's no open benefit for the whole, like, you know, there's no benefit for us if you're just buying like 140 paintings. I mean, art looks yeah. nice, and like for artists, I mean, you're getting a benefit 100%, you're getting a lot of money, but it's just like, you know, it's not really useful for us. No, I mean, like, yeah, and they need the to invest this, more in us, yeah. Like, there's a time and a place for everything, and you know, at the moment, the painting is not useful. Like, yeah, and I definitely think schools are useful yeah. right now in this pandemic. Exactly, like and I think education. the school, I think what we've learned from coronavirus is they haven't been investing much in education. Now with these investments like infrastructure, for example, building infrastructure, they've started thinking about, oh, you know what, some schools actually need to improve their buildings, or some can't even physically, some schools are really tiny, for example, you can't even do some of these measures, you know. And it's kind of weird it's that we've now realised from COVID-19 what we need to fund more schools. And even though it's been said before, I mean, it's been said countless times, and we've had to make, what, so many sort of funny cuts really to ensure that we're still getting our learning out here. It does, I don't think the government's realising completely that there are these so many different factors that are impacting us. And it's kind of, I know, I, I noticed, for example, some local councils are asking businesses, for example, to donate their old, unused um, digital devices. And I've just kind of thought, well, that's a bit strange. Then the government said they were going to do it for one year group. Like, what happened then? And then you kind of yeah. think, hmm, it's getting a bit strange. Even schools are saying, oh, we've had some left over. And I just kind of think, well, the government here should be also intervening for that to happen as well, because we could be reaching a much more wider array of students, really, if we just, yeah. I guess, make that effort. Really, I feel the like government. the government, they could easily fix what they're doing in the UK. But there are some countries we can't speak for on that topic, like America. Oh, God. Why mm. the thing is like America are even worse when it comes to investing in how are you so smart with like investing into military, but when it comes to education, what are they doing? The like I don't even know what they're doing. 
nowadays. Like the UK, we have a chance to fix what we've done wrong. Uh, there's some countries which can't really turn back as well, which is like America. But like us, we could do it. It's just we need to like take the opportunity to do it. The government, we're kind of like, mm. we're like you know, then they're not really doing it now. They they should they should be doing it. And the USA, it's like that country. I don't think I think it's going to be very hard for them to like I guess make things right. It's a massive nation, and they've done, they've like made so much investments into the military. Like, they're so smart with that, but not with education. And like, they've also like school shootings, so much money, like, they waste as well. It's just mm. they could be doing better. And yeah. I feel like it'd take longer for them, but for us, it'd take a bit shorter. And like, we actually have a chance. It's just our government, yeah. they need to they need to take action so, yeah it's yeah. really interesting Fahim I guess your message here is really that you want the government to start intervening I guess to improve education really in general not just all the time but also in lockdown you know it's challenging actually and especially now because yeah, with COVID-19 the pandemic they do need to start yeah, they realize, oh what have we done oh well, now we're so late like it's just awkward now like now you're realizing yeah, the, the entire nation doesn't have access to internet or devices. Now you're realizing this. Like, it took you so long to realize that. Yeah. Now it's kind they're of awkward, but they have time to make things right. They just need to take action. That's it. Like, yeah. it's really not, it's not as hard. Like, obviously it is, but not as hard as like some other nations. Yeah. And what about you, I okay? I guess if um, you had to it's sort of like we have the opportunity we're lucky enough obviously now uh i think the government was sort of like in a war sort of economy that's what they've called it the government aren't in the best place in terms of spending but if they are willing to spend money on things that aren't so beneficial to us they should be spending money on education and you know if i mentioned other countries and i think Whilst we can talk about the USA, we can also talk about countries that don't have access to, you know, they're economically developing, they're still quite behind on their education and they they don't even have access to technology, they don't even have access Completely. to, you know, classrooms that are COVID safe. We have that opportunity, but the government seems to not be doing anything about it. And I think Completely. it's quite concerning because it's sort of like, contradictory because you're saying that oh go to school go get an education do your GCSEs and A levels and then you don't even provide the people that need resources completely resources. and I also I think, think it's, yeah yeah it's I think, you know, in terms yeah, of, completely. yeah in terms of the GCSEs and A levels point I think the government has a great time right now to reform our education system because, you know, I know personally me and Anisha didn't take our GCSEs and it was more based on teachers' predictions, which I think are just inaccurate just because, you know, the teachers are the ones that know us. They're the ones who have been assessing us. And, you know, what if one day you have a bad day in an exam and then that determines the rest of your life? And I think also, you know, in a pandemic, as you said, people are learning virtually. Some people aren't motivated. And it's a great time right now to just say, let's scrap our education system. Let's introduce, for example, a Scandinavian model type education, which would be far more beneficial to all students. No, that's completely interesting. And I think as well, there is so much we can do to improve our education system. And you guys have both been talking about today, you know, there is, you know, yep, we are in this education lockdown, but it doesn't mean we're not going through any challenges. There are so many different challenges and they're not just unique to COVID-19. These sort of long-standing issues that have existed for so long now. And mm. we need to think about how we're going to tackle each of these to ensure that everyone is receiving, I guess, the proper education they receive. Mm. Because unfortunately, we are still on to see. I think what it is with the government is sometimes make these sort of variations of things and everything sort of varies. They have no sort of clarity. And what that does is it mm. produces this education that sort of differs, not just maybe from school to school, but maybe even year group also, to year group, you know. Also, it's, schools, it's they enforce insane. the wrong things. Like, they they always enforce the wrong things. That's, like, one of the biggest problems. Yeah, and it's been going on, like, so long. Like, even before and after lockdown, during lockdown, like, 
it's just like they enforce like such small things they don't look at the bigger pictures like they they could literally tell you what for wearing a hoodie but then there's bullying like right there and they don't do anything like like what are they doing like there's so many things you could be improving like obviously improve like how we get education like i guess that is now in the works we are considering that that more. is the mainly the most important but there's yeah, also okay. more stuff that's not the only thing the education system is not just learning education there's like factors which also affect our education like our mental health and mental health that links to bullying and like, like you know bullying can like ruin your mental health and it's just so many factors but like, some stuff it just you know, it like comes into place and they just don't really think too much mm. about them. So like, I would love to see the government think about uh, bullying and like the wrong type of rules they have. Like hoodies, they should be allowed. Like if, if it's PE now, nowadays, like how we wear our kits, just let us, it's really not a big deal. And it's like some small stuff you could get a detention for, like wearing a logo. Like what? Like. I what, literally, yeah. like, yeah, I witnessed, like, this kid, he got redlined, and he got excluded, like, internally, just for wearing a logo. Mm. How is that fair? Like, and then there's bullies who get away with stuff, and they don't do anything. Like, that, like, I don't, like, where, what are we doing? I guess, like, now, I guess we we also do have to think, start thinking more about like, the mental, I guess, of those individuals, because, you know, this is obviously a very difficult yeah. time. And also, okay, I'm just wondering as well, because um, we've heard now Fan talk a lot about what he wants the government to do, I guess, about education. What would you want if you had to come up with the main key asks? What would you ask the government to do in order to improve education for young people in general, but also, I guess, in COVID specific terms? But also, what can schools perhaps do as well to improve those experiences? I think, you know, the difficulty, let's just, I'm just going to start with schools and then expand to the government if that's the right. So yeah. in terms of schools, I'll talk about the fact that, you know, I think they just expect us to, after six months of not being in education, just immediately come back into school and just be these like work machines who are constantly doing the work and, you know, just easing back into the system. But I think, as I said, you know, there's been six months off of in school and, you know, and that's been quite for some people it's been quite traumatic because some people you know haven't had their support systems or you know they don't have a great family life and it's been I think they're not really taking that into consideration so I think it's sort of we've been given this enormous amount of pressure I know especially year 11 and year 13 right now they miss so much of school and they're just expecting them to come back into school learn as much as they can and do their exams and you know it's so difficult i know right now you're 11 to have their mocks and they're just so stressed out because then they feel like they've been left behind and no one's doing anything about that i think in terms of the government also um like i said before the education system seriously needs to be reformed i think that's been an argument for so long right now and you know I think also the disparities that are inherent within our education system. So we have a hierarchy within our education system in terms of there are private schools and then there are state schools. And those that are in private schools prevail, unfortunately. And they're the ones who get the top jobs. They're the ones who are more likely to get into us the group universities. And I think that's not just something that's been cultivated because of the pandemic. I think that's been a long-standing issue and it's definitely something that needs to be reformed. I think, of course, putting more funding into schools, again, like you said, Anisha, this has been such a long-standing issue and the government seems to be doing nothing about it. It's sort of like, you know, you do it yourself, you deal with it how you have to, like, teachers have to go out and buy glue sticks for us. Like, it's ridiculous, you know? And I think in terms of the pandemic, we just need to put into consideration how much of a toll it's had on people because I think people never experienced it how other people have made be like oh this is just like a great holiday you know this is fine but someone like I know like 
me, Anisha and I, we have such high expectations of ourselves. And if, for example, we were to miss learning and we were to do it, we would have to do it virtually or we wouldn't have as much access to information, then it would take a serious toll on us just because we want to get good grades. And if we don't Absolutely. get to achieve that, and I think it, for us, it will feel like the end of the world, you know, and I don't think it is. That yeah. really significantly not just impacts our mental health, our education, because of really this whole future that we've been building up, it can really be sort of teared apart and it just, with just a few simple sort of triggers, I guess, as well. And I guess another thing I wanted to say as well, because you were talking about, you know, how already, you know, we didn't get to take our GCSEs and obviously that was after algorithm fiasco though, but we didn't get to take it and we were obviously given teacher assessed grades. And now we've heard actually year 11s this year are going to be having the same thing. Do you think this indicates that we should be like, you know, reforming our education system that perhaps clearly at this point, maybe exams, having those sort of written exams weren't as key and important as needed actually, perhaps maybe having those teacher assessed grades, a series of exams throughout the years, having those grades resubmitted by teachers is a much more better option, would you say? I think definitely, I think our teachers know us much better than, uh, an exam because I know for example if you're in an exam you know you might be having a really bad day and you might you know just not be feeling up to it and it's just it's quite it's just ridiculous the fact that we are literally determined by a piece of paper and I think it's just it's ridiculous the amount of pressure that's put onto young people to sort of conform to that you know, society standards of if you're not, if you don't get a nine, then you're just considered as dumb. And I think also the fact that we have foundation and higher, that's just, just completely ridiculous. Just considering yeah, the fact it, that in yeah. foundation it's like and higher, out of your whole required. year, yeah, it's just like out of your whole year, only five people can go through. The others are all dumb. Like you have to do it again. It's just that's basically it's so what sad. I was trying to say to them. Yeah, and it puts exactly. so much pressure. Like. You do terrible at school like, when you're under pressure and you like you literally just choke and your mentality you're, you're just shaking basically and it, it it plays in like it's a huge factor like there's some days where I do really good and there's some days where I, if I'm not in the mood I'm just like annoyed or something or like something happens I don't do well so yeah, yeah. Thank I think you. also people like sort of identify themselves with their grades and it sort of becomes like this thing where if you don't get a good grade then you're a failure you know and everything is based around our grades rather than actually based on how we can actually learn because I feel like people we come into school we don't learn we we try to memorize facts we try to memorize like you know sentence starters just because that's the game. It's the game of education. It's not necessarily that we're learning something. And I think that's a big issue because then when we go out into the real world, we don't know what we're doing. We don't have much of a great cultural, you know, knowledge about the world unless you want to do that yourself. And I think that's definitely concerning. Completely. Thank you both for speaking to me today and to actually speak to all the viewers here because honestly, both of your contributions have been so precious. Thank you so much. I've truly felt that I understood now the realities of education in lockdown. And I think this was, you know, we're not just so many young people, but also actually highlight how much education has been varying from school to school, really, because, you know, we've only had it from one school. And just hearing that already, you can see there are some great things, but there are also some, you know, negative things that we still need to address here. So thank you both so much. So thank as you me. can hear, uh, you know, as you've heard here today from our two guests today, what we need to be focusing on is actually to reform the education system rather than trying to improve their experiences of education in lockdown, because these problems that have arisen from lockdown and that's, I guess, been shined a light on, they aren't specific to COVID-19. There are these long-standing issues that have existed for a long time, but have only come to light due to the pandemic. Things like the digital divide, things like the issue around assessments, and there's things like even just even having this sort of virtual lessons as well this whole issue with remote learning and the whole idea of actually going to school physically is much more better for your mental health and making sure you have your learning even we're starting to see things like infrastructure building changes already and sort of driving to more sort of individuality expression all of these sort of things we can sort of see with COVID-19 what it's done now that's shining light how are we going to address those issues that we found out now 
instead of just keeping to, to instead of just talking about these issues how do we make sure that we can actually make sure that everyone's on the same level playing fields and not experiencing these issues as much anymore how do we address things like the digital divide how do we um, address things like the issue around assessments and it all comes down really to intervention we really need the government and schools to be able to uh, we really need the government actually to step up mainly on this. We need the government to start creating these changes rather than giving us little clarity policies because we can't have different schools varying really on how they, for example, enforce coronavirus uh, sort of um, restrictions and not uh, sort of precautionary measures really. And I guess what we need here is this sort of same sort of thing in each school so that we understand that everyone is on the same level playing field and also recognizing how can we. Uh, with these issues, what can we do is, I guess, to raise awareness more about these issues as well. So thank you so much for listening to this episode today. And if you enjoyed it, please do tune again in the next two weeks. There will be another episode. And please do follow and subscribe VOD Talk and do uh, give any suggestions if you can for next episodes. Thank you.